beautiful 8, 8 a.m. out here, man. Yes, sir. The, the, the young little son, James Alpha I'm Boy. You know what I'm saying? We don't listen to him when he speaks. I'm gonna be 20 before he turns 20. Like, that on, that would be how math works. Okay, but that's, okay. <laughs> but yeah, man, just finished up a lift. We went to the gym earlier, or the field. Yeah, and we're, yeah. dude, I'm so tired. He told me to drink water because that one video I was dying in the beginning because I was thirsty. So I drank water. Drink six bottles of water a day. You need, to, be you need to drink eight. eight. Drink eight a day sure. and you'll be hydrated. Oh, I'm, I'm tired. All right, y'all, uh, I've finished my shower, and, and uh, right now I'm about to go get some gas. Um, you know, I looked at my bank account, and I had an extra $200 that I didn't realize. I have a weird feeling that the mics, because this happened last time I bought mics, I, I assume they must have get, refunded me my money for some reason, like a couple of days later. I don't know what's going on. I might need to get them off of Best Buy or something, because they're not giving me... Uh, what well, I'm trying to buy, but you know what I'm saying? If I go on Best Buy, I know it'll work. I went to the their actual site, um, the mic site. Maybe they just don't work right now. Um, but that, that only makes such sense to me. No, he took my he took my spot, bro. I'm about, I ain't gonna lie, I might have to get out and press about that. I'm getting ready to go to a physical. I need this. Once I get this done, I think I have all my information in to play football. Uh, this upcoming year, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I have to really put this off to the last day, but once it's in, I'm pretty sure all my forms are in. Uh, make sure that any school forms or things you need to get in, y'all get in when y'all need them, because it is a hassle and it's annoying to get it in late. Um, but one way or another, we got it done, so I'm not complaining. Just ready, doing what I gotta do. Um, but yeah, so I got an appointment at 6:30. It's 5:42. I'm downtown though, so by the time I get there, basically my appointment's gonna be ready to go. Um, where's my thing at? I gotta. I came back inside. I was leaving work actually, but I came back inside so I can print this thing off. Um, there we go. And yeah, so I'm ready. I haven't had a physical in a year, so I'm hoping that goes good. I don't know. I know I'll be fine though. And yeah, I mean, I, of course, I still have not concerns, but like little things about my knee that I, I you know, what I'm saying I want to get better, but I don't think it'll hold me out. I think I, I might just take a little break or something before I get back to it, but. One way or another, this season. Thank you, I was waiting on you to stop talking, goodness. This season is the season. I'm telling you, this season is the season. One way or another, I'm letting you know, we don't see it, I, I guarantee. I can't show y'all the full room, I'm, I'm a little messy right now, but let me go ahead and show y'all this, man, my, my shoes came in today, thank God, because again, there was a point in time where I couldn't buy shoes like that, but you know, jobs are great, um, and then on top of that, I got some clothes from Comfort, well, y'all will see me wear this one day, it is the, it, it felt so good, I mean, it just looks good, it feels good, um, but in my Nike thing, they gave me a uh, sticker, you can't really see it when, when it's on white, because it's white, I'm going to put it on my laptop. I see people with laptop stuff all the time. I'm like, why the heck they got it on there? But, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I kind of want to join the club. And on top of that today, let me let me show you what we're eating tonight. Whew. Shout out to little bro Christopher. He's in the room over there. You can't see him. But shout out. Just about to hit. This is a uh, crane grape. You know what I'm saying? Healthier drink. Very sugary, though. So I can't really say healthy at all. Um, but I'm about to chow down. Have a good old time. Probably watch a movie. Probably need to stop watching movies, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, but yeah, man, this is probably where it ends for the night, maybe, possibly. Not 100% sure. Who knows with me? But uh, thank God, man. We live in a time where there are too many certified victim Christians. You might be asking, Alex, what is a certified victim Christian? I am talking about a Christian who has not fully opened themselves up to the overcoming that is in their Savior, Christ Jesus. I am talking about a Christian who complains and lives life as if they are being attacked more than that, that than they are understanding that they are the attacker. And when I, when I say that, I want us to understand, I'm not, I'm not talking about coming out and attacking the world or bringing violence. When I say we are on the attack, I am saying there is no one that we are hiding. We are defending ourselves or running from. But in fact, we stand with the God that is always taking the victory. So there is never a time where we need to be sitting on the back burner wondering, what are we going to do next? Because the only thing we have to do as Christians is trust and believe and focus on God. We see what happens many times the moment our focus drifts in the Bible. I've been reading day in and day out Jeremiah. 
And we keep seeing that Jeremiah is coming before Israel, coming before Judah, and the same message he is giving is the word of the Lord. The reason Israel and Judah are taken into captivity and are destroyed and devastated and fall into chaos is not because they were a weak nation. It's not because God didn't love them. It's not because Babylon was any greater than them. But it is because their focus shifted from God and into the world. And if you want to know what I mean by that, if Jeremiah's message to them was, God is telling you to submit yourselves to King Nebuchadnezzar and you will live. But if you fight against him, you will be destroyed, devastated, and fall by the sword. If this is Jeremiah's word to them, then their focus in God would be to trust themselves unto King Nebuchadnezzar and they would live. But I want you to understand the reason that they, they, they wouldn't do so was not just out of disobedience to God, but out of fear of King Nebuchadnezzar in this situation. Can you imagine being told that your enemy was going to come into your land and you had to give yourself up? Can you imagine America uh, looking at the news and seeing your president holding up a white flag to the other nations? That is a scary sight. But the thing is that it, it's, it's not man that instructed for this to be, but the, the Lord had called for Israel and Judah to do so. And why did he do? Again, I want you to remember that Israel and Judah had fallen into wicked times and, and they had reaped what they, they were reaping now, what they had sowed because they had sowed sin for many years. And they, they decided not to heed God's word, which left, left them susceptible to discipline. They were left wide open. Because they did not allow themselves to focus on the Lord when they had the chance. And now God's mercy is being shown even more by giving them the opportunity to put themselves in, in Nebuchadnezzar's hand willingly, not by force, and they will live. But again, they were scared and they did not trust God. And they did not trust God because, and, and, and because they didn't trust him, they did not focus on him. The Bible makes it clear that those that focus on the Lord will have rest. They will have peace. And if we're not focusing on God, then what will we have then? We will have everything. We will have distractions. We will have fear. We will not have rest. We'll have everything but rest. Life is, is not only a disaster, but it, it's, it's almost unenjoyable when you can't rest. It's almost unenjoyable when you have no peace. And peace is further than, peace is not the absence of the situation, but the presence of God in the situation. Therefore, when we focus on God, that is why we have peace, because we become, we come in proximity with him. And that is why we don't focus on him. We lack peace because we are out of his proximity. We are out of his presence. Being in the presence of God is pure bliss. That is why it says to die, is, that to die is gain. But the, the true death that we must do first is the death in the flesh. Before we even die in the spirit, we can have connection with God here. There are too many victim Christians who live life allowing the devil, the enemy, the life itself to slap them around as if they have not yet overcome. Jesus Christ on the cross, his last words was, it is finished. So who are you to live your life as if God, uh, uh, Jesus didn't finish the job? As if there's something left for him to do, as if you can't overcome. You're sad. It is sad. We are sad. I am sad every single time we allow ourselves to lack the image in our mind of overcoming. We are sad. And more than anything, we are doubtful. We're just, we're no better than Thomas. Oh, doubting Thomas. who To doubt Jesus and doubt his ability. We're no worse than, than, than Thomas saying, I won't believe until I put my finger in his hand. Many of us won't believe until we're out of the situation. When God calls faith to be the, it, 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 it's, the it's the thing, the things that are unseen. I'm reading a book right now. Uh, I'm, I might butcher this title, but I'm pretty sure it's called Seeing the Invisible, Doing the Impossible. And the, the point of the invisible is that it's not yet there. That's the part of faith. You don't see it yet. Doing the impossible is when it comes to fruition. But before you can ever do the impossible, you first have to see the invisible because the image is not yet there yet. And so life right now might be beating your tail up. You might be, be getting butchered, being thrown all around. The, the, the walls are, are coming in on you and the roof is caving in and, and life is just coming. It's almost like it's coming to an end. But again, that is what you are seeing. 
That is our vision. And this is the whole idea is that your eyes are deceiving. Our situations are deceiving. Life itself is deceiving. But one thing stands true, and that is God's word. And if God's word proclaims victory and overcoming for his people, then who are we? Who are we? To give in to the look of the situation, the look of the enemy, the look of what, what life is showing us instead of trusting in God's word. That is where focusing on him comes key. Because if we focus in him in the midst of the walls caving in, we're not too scared of claustrophobia anymore. I'm not too scared about being put in a tight circle. You know why? Because I know at the end of the day, the tighter of the room gets, the closer God is. I want you to think about that. The tighter of the room gets, if God is in there with you, he's squeezing closer and closer to you. And at some point... The enemy can only come so close because the enemy can't touch God. And if God is within you, if God is next to you, you don't have to worry about a dang thing. But the problem is a lot of us are scared because we are in proximity. A lot of us are scared because we have not put ourselves in the hands of the Lord to allow him to do his mighty work in us, through us, and around us. Because God affects more than, man, God's plan is so much larger than just us that he will affect the things around you. The very house I live in right now is a blessed house, not because of who I am, but because of the one that lives within me. Because I'm not the only one. God is in the presence of this house. This house is a blessed house. <laughs> Wherever I walk is a blessed place. Not because A.B. is just some amazing person. No, but because the God that's inside of him is an amazing God. And so I'm tired of being a victim Christian. I'm tired of acting as if this life has overcome me when God says that, that we that we are to overcome the life. Man, verse 24 of Jeremiah, the, um, the, the 50th chapter now, man, we made it far. It reads, Babylon, I laid a trap for you and you were caught, but you did not even know it. You were found and captured because you pitted yourself against the Lord. First off, before I even get to the beginning of that verse, it says you pitted yourself against the Lord. Who are we to fear the enemy who stands against God? The only reason we have to fear is if we're standing with him. <laughs> but in truth, if, if we rely on the Lord, if we're focused on him, then we're standing right there with him. And if we're on God's side, then we're on the winning side at every single time of life. So what are you worried for? Because in the beginning it says, Babylon, I laid a trap for you and you were caught, but you did not even know it. And so Babylon is the name being used here because, again, Babylon at this time is coming against Israel. But it, I want you to look at your life now. Look at the things that are coming against you. Maybe it's, 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 it's the, the dysfunctionality in your household. Maybe Satan's been attacking you mentally and spiritually. Maybe you can't feel that you can get in God's presence anymore. Maybe you don't feel as if you're the, the person you want to be. Life just doesn't seem to be going right. Every single time you're, you're trying to fix things in life, it seems like things keep going wrong. You don't know what's going on. After a while, you start to believe that you don't know what side you're on anymore. You feel like God's coming at you now. Like God and the enemy have come together to attack you. But I want you to remember, when the, when the room starts to get smaller, God's right there with you. So he's just getting closer and closer. You ain't got nothing to fear. And, it's, and, and it says here that the Lord laid a trap for Babylon. What was that trap? That trap was Israel. That trap was Judah. And see, the problem with Israel and Judah is that they saw themselves as the victim. They saw themselves as the ones to run away from Babylon instead of running at. They stopped going on the attack and began to turn into the, 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 the prey when they were meant to be the predator. And the reason you might say, then why would God tell them to, to give themselves up to Babylon? Number one, they were called to discipline. They must be obedient. But number two, Babylon was a wicked nation. Yes, the wicked will rule for a short time. It happens. Life, man, life is one of the most complex things. But again, they will only last for so long. Wickedness can only rule for so long because it is an unfirm foundation. It's not built on the same foundation we're on because we're on the eternal foundation. We know that in the end, we will win. But I want you to understand that we will win even now if we just trust in the Lord for the victory he's already proclaimed in our lives. You know, I'm not even worried about how much time this is taking because right, I, I, I think we have to fully dive into this. But I'm enjoying this right here. So I want you to understand. It said that Babylon had fell into the trap. What is that trap? We are the trap. Why do you think God has been, Why is the enemy attacking us sometimes? Sometimes we get we're, we're too busy and trying to overcome and just get out of the situation, not worried about what God wants us to do in this situation. Sometimes the, the, God has the enemy attacking you so you can turn around and smack the enemy back in its face. You are the trap to the enemy. 
You are meant to be the enemy's devastation. You are meant to show the world that the situation that the enemy put you in, when life started coming down on you, this is your testimony. Life almost caved, caved in. You almost lost everything. You didn't know where you were going to go but God. And all of a sudden, the enemy has to turn around and run the opposite way because you're on the attack. And the situation that was once for your downfall it turned to be your benefit. I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire, successful, so, uh, uh, rich. I'm, I'm telling you one thing's for sure. The enemy will not ever prevail against your life if you put your life in God's hand. I'm letting you know that you will always be the enemy's trap. But you have to first believe that you are not the victim. Because too many times the enemy is destroying us because we believe that we are being called to be destroyed instead of being called to be the one to trap the enemy. We should be bringing the enemy to dysfunctionality. We should be bringing the enemy to confusion. We should be bringing the enemy to failure. But too many of us are allowing the enemy to get in our minds and our faith and make us believe that we are on the run when in fact we are on the attack. We are the trap to the enemy. It believes it's the predator. Little did it know this prey right here don't walk alone. <laughs> we are never alone. And that's why I want to go to verse 34, which reads, The Redeemer is strong. The Lord of armies is his name. He will fervently champion their, their cause so that he might bring rest to the earth, but turmoil to those who live in Babylon. Our Redeemer is strong. The Lord of armies is his name. And he will fervently champion our cause so that he might bring rest to the earth and turmoil to our enemies. I want you to understand that we've already taken the victory, but we cannot participate in this victory until we stop looking like we're the victims. Here it says that he's going to bring rest to the earth and turmoil to the enemy. So we should already be walking in rest. We should already be walking in peace. And we should be living our lives in such bliss and focus on God that the enemy is living in turmoil. What puts the enemy in turmoil more than when it can't get to you? Than when it can't do nothing to you? The enemy's going to come to attack. But when you know you're walking with the shield, then why are you turning around freaking out? If the Lord is your rock and your shield, then why are you turning around as if it can hit you? The enemy can't touch you. But too many times we jump from behind the shield when we get scared and that's when we get hit. We get scared and we jump from behind the shield because we don't trust in it. But little again, the faith of the mustard seed does more than enough. It just takes a little bit of faith, but sadly a lot of us lose it all to the littlest of situations, to the littlest of attacks, to the littlest of Satan's little moves. And man, I'm loving this. I'm telling you, man. If we just learned to trust in God over our situations and close our eyes, sometimes things would just get easier because sometimes our eyes deceive us to the point we forget just who our God is. We can't see God, but we can see how he's working. And sadly, we see our situation to get blinded and stop believing in the fact that God is really doing something in our lives. We stop believing that he can really do something and we start to see what the enemy's doing and get scared. Just because we see something visibly does not mean that it is that, that we should be scared. Yes, you may see the planes come in the sky. Yes, you may see all the signs. You may see everything saying run. But when you have a God that says, I am your buckle and I am your shield. I am your champion. I am your redeemer. I will save you. What are you running for? Because understand, when you run from God, you're running to the enemy. You're running towards the attack. So turn back and face the Lord. Because when we, when we turn our backs on the Lord, then we're looking at the enemy. And what we're doing is we're allowing ourselves to be susceptible to the very attack God was going to shield us from. So stop playing the victim because you are what you believe you are. If you believe you're a Christian, you believe in Christ, then you shall be. But sadly, a lot of us claim Christian and believe that we can live life however we want to live instead of living by him. Living by God is more than the acknowledgement of his existence, but the acknowledgement of his lordship and the lifestyle that acknowledges it even further. So if God is Lord in your mind, then in your flesh, in your activity, he must be Lord as well. So I'm telling you, don't fear here. Don't fear here. And don't you dare fear 
in the flesh. Because the devil can't touch you. The enemy can't touch you. Life can't touch you. Because God is called overcoming. You may pain. You may hurt. But when the walls are closing in, remember, God is right there. And the smaller the room gets, the bigger God gets. So I ain't worrying about a dang thing. Because I ain't no victim. I stand with the Lord, which means he will champion us. And I will not worry. I am not a certified victim. I'm a certified champion. Let us pray. Dear God, we say thank you, Lord God, for this win. Thank you for this victory that we have already proclaimed because you've already proclaimed it in your word. So we say thank you. Though we have not seen it, Lord God, it is still invisible to the sight. In the spirit, Lord God, it has already been proclaimed. So we say thank you, Lord God, and we acknowledge it in all aspects of our life, Lord God. Every single attack, every single thing that the enemy may throw at us, Lord God, we proclaim victory over it right now, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that your word and your will, Lord God, stand, stand, stand on our lives, Lord God, and be a blessing that we may, may take it, Lord God, and run with it and say thank you for it for the rest of our days. That we may plead the victory over our kids, plead the victory, Lord God, over our families, plead the victory over our lives in every single aspect, plead the victory over our, 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 our need for humble is plead the victory over our pride plead the victory over our sin plead the victory lord god for homosexuality plead the victory lord god over premarital sex plead the victory lord god over all these things that hold us from being in proximity with you Please plead the victory over any attack the enemy throws for it shall never prevail against the hand of the lord so we say thank you lord god we stand by you we acknowledge your name we live by your name and we glorify it it's in jesus name we pray in jesus name we all pray amen well y'all hey I'm talking to a whole bunch of champions right now, man. Ain't no certified, ain't no certified, nothing but a champion up in here right now, man. Well, if you enjoyed this vlog, then make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoy the vibe, man, hey, no limit. Young and winning, we'll say that instead ain't coming back.